Greetings gentlemen and ladies dev dude here in today's video I'm going to be showing my favorite pipeline my favorite tools that uh, help me to create good looking consistent characters or you know transform you into an AI character uh, let me show you some of the results before we uh, get into this so for example here we have our source image that's our source image right there. So you have a reference for what we're working with in some of these cases. Here we have an AI generated image uh, of me in uh, in armor, of course, being a bit of a nerd and a geek. That seems like fun for me. Uh, here's one of me uh, as a wizard. Uh, here's one of me as a, a metal rock god. Because, uh, you know, why not, right? Uh, but based on the source image, and then we've got a couple over here. I work on some music and kind of do some album cover type stuff. So if, you know, you're working on a brand, if you want to just create cons consistent characters, if you want to get like some stuff that goes along with your personal brand, your musician brand, your business brand, whatever the case may be, and you want to generate some, some uh, theme appropriate art, this is a really cool way to do it here. I've also got a meditation brand that I work on, so I wanted to generate some sort of, some sort of tongue in cheek guru looking stuff, right? Uh, I wanted to show you guys some more examples here. So we have my, my girlfriend who wanted to be turned into, whoops, girlfriend wanted to be turned into, uh, there's our source image right there. So there's our source image. I'll just put that over to the left. And uh, she wanted to be turned into a sorceress. She wanted to be turned into a mermaid. So we've got her as a mermaid, her as a sorceress a couple of times. There's me, of course, rescuing some kittens uh, from a burden build, burning building. That's actually not AI generated. That's totally authentic. So after having tried a lot of different AI arts for the purpose of generating either avatar portraits of yourself or consistent characters, I have found one that stands a cut above the rest. Uh, and that is called RenderNet. I, of course, will put the links to all of the tools in the description area of this video. But RenderNet.ai is what we're going to be using here today to, to generate up our consistent characters or our AI selves. It Bears worth mentioning that I'm not saying RenderNet is the best art generator out there right now, but for the purpose of, of character portraits, AI portraits, consistent characters, I think it is actually the current, currently the best. I use Midjourney a lot for other things, but for consistent characters and uh, transforming images into AI characters, RenderNet seems to be currently the best at it. But uh, out of the gate, you might not get that good of results. That's what this whole video is about, because there's certain settings that you're going to want to try in order to get those results that you think are, are, you know, really cool and they work really well and they're actually accurate. So what we're going to take a look at is the feature down on the left, which is called face lock. Now, for the most part, when you select face lock, go to face lock. For the most part, you can use this with just a nice straight on image of a face. You know, straight on images of your face are better. Uh, however, if you wanted to take it to the next step, what you could do is you could crop in even closer on your face so that it's basically mostly only your face in the image. You'll get better results if you do it this way, uh, but it's not totally necessary. I'm actually even gonna go a step further here today. I'm gonna grab a image of my face, I'm going to zoom in on it, I'm going to kind of crop it out, and then what I've done is I've gone into Canva, and I've even removed the background. So I'm actually, I haven't actually even tried with like a nice clean background like this, but this could only help the image generation to focus in more on the face and then get less distracted by the backgrounds around. So basically all I did to remove the background image was I've taken my image over here into Canva, and all I've done is I've gone to the edit image section over here and I've used the background remover and I have given my background color a color of, of black and then I've just exported that image from the Canva and brought that over into RenderNet. So now I have an extremely clean image straight up and down, a little bit of you know, a little bit of perspective to it, just a tiny bit to show that facial depth. I think that's a helpful thing to have like a little bit of perspective instead of like perfect, perfect straight on. Um, but pretty much straight on is what we're going to go for. So once we've got our face lock turned on and in, what we can do, what we can now do is choose the models that we want to generate with. So for example, if we go over here and we choose the Juggernaut XL model, this looks like a scary monster, but actually it's not just for scary monsters. So we've got our face lock in, and so let's say my description is going to be uh, a European, a European knight in armor, right? 
One thing I've noticed lately about RenderNet is that typing seems a bit slow, but it gets there eventually. Uh, what, we can, what we can also do, I'm going to also change to HD. It generates up a bit faster for the sake of this video. I'm also going to choose Square um, as our rendering mode, and I'm going to choose a batch size of four. This will give us four images at a time using the Juggernaut model. So let's generate that up and see what we get. Okay, I actually changed the prompt to European Knight in plate mail with dark hair because I had noticed a lot of the images were coming out with helmets entirely covering the head. So when we specify a prompt like with dark hair, then uh, RenderNet knows that we should be featuring maybe something that shows dark hair instead of covering it entirely up with a helmet. Uh, so here's a few of our initial options. Now, I don't like these that much. They're not terrible, but I don't like these that much, but that's okay. That's what this video is all about. It's about getting good results. So I just wanted to show you a few ways to get some bad results before we get into some good results. Uh, so here's the Juggernaut model. If you click on an image, you can see which model was used. For example, this is Juggernaut XL. Let's try something for fun here before we go too much further. Let's grab Epic Realism or add Epic Realism, Juggernaut, and let's grab, I don't know, Kobach's Timeless Beauty. And now we're using three different models with each of them getting three different generations. So in total, we'll get nine images, three from each model, and we can compare what each of these models do and how they generate their particular art styles. And so as you can see, we've got some dramatically different results. Up at the top, we have the Juggernaut XL model, we're not there yet. I'm not really liking what I see here yet. We have cope, or we have epic realism here, which I absolutely hate. Uh, the <laughs> and then we have uh, Copac's timeless beauty uh, down at the bottom here. Uh, so here's here here's how you can kind of play around and you can generate using different models, different loras, various other things, and achieve different sort of art styles, right? Um, just wanted to let you guys know that these things are there. Now let me show you what I like to use in order to get kind of uh, results that I think are pretty nice, accurate looking results. So what I like to set is under the models, I like to set either Juggernaut or Copax Timeless XL. Uh, I've gotten good results out of both of those. Uh, but then I like to combine it with Laura, which is Cinema XL here. So let's go ahead and generate and here we have some interesting results. Getting pretty good, I think, not too very bad. So that's the uh, Broke model used with uh, the Laura, the Cinema, Cinema XL Laura. And so that's the Copax. There's Epic Realism XL. So all the models generate a little bit different results. And what I find is that when you're trying to create an image that looks, you know, like your personal avatar or a consistent character or whatever the case may be, the key is really going to be in a little bit of prompt engineering along with regenerating, 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 because you can generate up with a certain set of prompt commands, a certain image to face lock, and you'll get some stuff that looks you know, sort of like you, and then you'll get some stuff that looks way, way different, right? So it is a bit of a random random trial and error process. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to kind of pay attention to is how you're asking for your, your particular prompting. So this one, Handsome Sorcerer Casting Magic Spells, right? I've implemented Handsome Sorcerer and a few other things like that. Uh, Depending on how you ask, you will get some sort of dramatically different results because here we have a sorcerer casting magic spells. And in this case, what RenderNet is looking for is what it understands of a prompt word sorcerer. Okay, so we've got a lot of old men sorcerers here. And so it's applying what it thinks a sorcerer is uh, to the face lock that I've given it. So in this case, I've got a lot of kind of older looking versions of my, my face lock image. And you know, it doesn't look like the face lock image, but it would probably look like an older version of me. That's because RenderNet's trying to, trying to combine what it understands of the keyword prompt sorcerer. So if you want to get certain results that are more tuned into your own particular look and style, for example, I am a European man, I am a roughly, you know, middle age, whatever the case may be. So giving the prompt some of those things that are more appropriate to what you're actually going for in the in the output result is going to help dial in what you get 
out of uh, the RenderNet generations. Uh, a lot of times also RenderNet will look to, again, what it understands of uh, what it understands of what you're looking for. So it'll maybe look for some movie references, it'll look for some characters throughout history, whatever it's been trained on, whatever it's learned on. And it'll it'll take your face lock and kind of combine that sometimes with what it understands of the prompt you're giving it. So like I say, this is the process of re-rolling, re-rolling, you know, generate, 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 try again, try again, try again. Mix a few different models around. Sometimes you'll get much better results with certain models uh, than you'll get with other models. Uh, this is not to say epic realism as a model is bad, but in this particular case, it's rolled kind of peculiar. So I might add this to say instead of European knight, I might say handsome European knight, uh, etc., and give a little bit more prompting to try to get what I'm looking for, right? Uh, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Reroll, uh, reroll, reroll, you know, regenerate until you find something you're happy with. Uh, combine some of the different models, try a few of them at a time. Each one you try puts that into your render queue. So you can get like, for example, three of each. Uh, and with RenderNet right now, I'm actually on the plan that lets me generate up to 10 images at a time. Depending on your plan, you can generate more or less images at once. So I like to maybe grab a couple of models. Juggernaut is usually very reliable. Uh, I've got some good results with Copax. Epic Realism can sometimes be good. But basically, I, what I would suggest is, depending on what sort of art and the character style you're looking to create, uh, play around with some stuff and combine some stuff. Combine the models, combine the Loras, and uh, generate up a few things, and then pay attention to what your results are. Take a look at what you actually used and what you like, and then you'll know what to use and try again. And then you can basically hone in on what sort of results you want to get and then just regenerate with exactly those results until you actually get what, you, what you're looking for. So I hope you have enjoyed this video on consistent characters and turning yourself into an AI character. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. All right.